Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Telia and I do cosplay? Question mark? <laughs> uh, so uh, I do cosplay. I sew clothes, historical, trying to sew historical, uh, and a lot of characters. And yeah, I just want to share it and hopefully inspire someone to do the same question mark? I don't know. Uh, but this video I'm making the Arwen Chase costume. I love Lord of the Rings. I rewatch it every Christmas, all three films. Uh, and I've really wanted to for a long time to make one of Arwen's costumes. Uh, they're very intricate and it's very intimidating so I thought I would start with something slightly easier I thought no but it's it was fun making this and uh, I learned a lot and hopefully I'll feel like I can make something more intricate that she wears in the future I recently started this channel I only have a few videos out thus far and I want to keep making more videos more sewing videos more characters and things like that uh, I have in the future planned to make all of the clothes that Anastasia wears in the Disney movie Anastasia, which was my personal favorite growing up, and which is a big project. There's like nine outfits. Uh, but I have started making the first one, and if you want to see that and more from me, please do subscribe to this channel and like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, don't, don't press the not like button that's I'm, I'm trying here you know like let's put out some positive vibes okay um but if you want to see more like that do subscribe i also have a tiktok and an instagram i'm very bad at instagram i post very <laughs> unfrequently uh but my handle is the same everywhere and uh, if you like funny kind of character tiktoks Follow me there if you want unfrequent posting of finished results, like the Arwen Chase costume. Do follow me on Instagram. Follow me everywhere. It's, it's, it's fun, you know? Sometimes I'll pop up on your feed and that could be fun. Anyways, so uh, let's begin this video and hope you enjoy. For the chase costume, I decided to make a underdress that was white. Uh, that is what's showing in, on the sleeves as well as um, on the bottom underneath the coat thing. So I decided to do that and I got some very light white curtains that I thrifted and I decided to use them. I also have a pattern for like a medieval-esque very costumey uh, sort of dress and I used the sleeves for that to make those flowy elven sleeves. I decided to just hem all of the edges because I didn't know how much I actually needed of the fabric since I didn't have a clear vision of what to do with the dress. It did change a lot throughout the process which you'll see um, but I just hemmed all the lines and I thought that was the best way. It also takes a very long time to do that by hand for me, so that took me a while. Um, so about this much I'm gonna cut off um, because I feel like it has enough looseness. Like I said, she is to my measurements, so it should be fine. I don't want it to be too loose, but not too tight either. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark off with a pen uh, where I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to take it off uh, and here uh, and then I'm just going to cut it and pin it together and yes, let's begin.
after I draped the fabric, which I left on my mannequin because I didn't know what to do with it, I decided to do something I did know how I wanted it to look, which was the sleeves. So I used my pattern, um, the medieval-esque sleeves, and uh, basically what I did is I shortened the length of the sleeve. I shorten it basically because uh, originally the sleeve went all the way down to my cuffs but I wanted it to only go down to my cre arm crease, <laughs> the arm butt. Uh, so I just shortened it uh, on this part, on the upper arm, as well as shorten it because it was very like, it was proportionally right to have it to arm length, uh, to sleeve length, to <laughs> cuff length, I don't know. But what I did instead, I just shortened the arm and then I also shortened the sleeve part, the, the flowy sleeve part. And I used that uh, to put on the remainder, to put on the rest of the fabric, uh, which wasn't a lot. I did want to try to not use the other um, curtain so I had two of these curtains uh, and I wanted to save one just because I really like how that fabric felt and I knew that I would be able to do the sleeves and I did I mean it took a little extra work um, and it took a lot of replacing the fabric constantly and they are not equal one has an upper arm seam and the other one doesn't which is fine. It's fine for this project because it was gonna be underneath the jacket anyway, so I didn't really think about it, but using it for anything else, maybe that's not the best. Maybe I'll add like a fake seam on the other one. Who knows, who knows? Welcome back. To the next day and uh, let me give you some updates first of all I watched Lady Hawk last night and it is amazing if you haven't seen Lady Hawk what have you been doing with your life I honestly don't know it is pure perfection if you love fantasy sword fights romance comedy animals you should watch it, honestly. I mean, just the nostalgia of the 80s soundtrack is beautiful. If you don't feel nostalgic over the 80s, maybe you won't like it. I mean, you'll still like it, but I mean, the soundtrack is amazing. It's so 80s. Anyways, watch it. And then, updates about the dress. So, I realized I've done all the uh, hemming. Uh, except for the bottom, because here's what I realized last night. Uh, putting together, so before I had it like, sorry Anne, I had it like this. Like it would be a plain front and then the seam would be in the side. Right. But I realized if I put it like this, and then put the seam in the front, and then don't do it all the way down. So I think I might just do that instead, because I think it's going to look cool. Um, but yeah, so I've hemmed all around, um, hand stitched everything, uh, just around this long piece. It takes far longer than I thought, which, um, which I should have anticipated, because I'm a time optimist. Which means I always think I have more time than I do, and I don't, usually. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do the sleeves. I still have to hem the sleeves, uh, and then sew them together, and then put them on. I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to... Let's bring you in closer. I still haven't decided if I want to cut a hole and put the sleeve on a hole so it's pinned like this and then the sleeve is here, or 
if I want to, because I have enough fabric for it to still fit right, for me to just scoop it down and then put the sleeve onto this. So there will be like an open neck kind of cowl neck kind of, I don't know what it's called. Uh, but I haven't decided on that yet. I think the draping on the side would look nice and I do have enough fabric to do that. Uh, and it does feel more elven to have like very much open off the shoulder, off the shoulder, that's what it's called, kind of thing. Um, but I haven't decided and I think I'm gonna think about that while I'll hem the sleeve. Z sleeves. So I'll just hem the sleeves, put them together, and there's one that has two pieces and one that I'm just gonna have to do around, which makes them not identical, which I should have thought of before, but I didn't. So I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but I'll figure it out. So it's been a few months, it's been November and December, and I'm back again with uh, continuing to making my Arwen costume. Uh, I sound a bit nasally because <laughs> I, uh, I was recently sick, uh, I had COVID, but I'm better now. Jesus Christ, a bird just flew into the window. He's fine though. Don't, don't fly into don't. I was gonna film him, but I flew away. Anyways, so, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to attach the sleeves to the dress. Um, as you see here, uh, it's there are no sleeve holes for it. Um, that's a piece of thread. Uh, so I'm just gonna attach it straight to the fabric and then when I think it sits right I'm gonna cut out the hole uh, and that's that and then I'm gonna start with the coat all right
The finishing touches on the white underdress uh, was simply just cutting a sort of half circle line uh, on the bottom edge front of the dress and making sure that I hem it the way I hem the rest of the dress and just cutting off any excess and making sure that everything was folded correctly and everything was stitched down. Uh, so that was the last thing that I did. I did not put uh, a split in the back of it. I didn't feel like it needed it and I wanted to keep it more versatile and I don't think it affects the end result. I think it, because I'm not riding in this, uh, it doesn't really affect the look of the dress when I'm walking or even running. So I decided to just keep it a hole instead of just cutting it the way that the jacket is. Uh, but I had the rest of it and that was pretty much the underdress done. After I finished the underdress, I started with the jacket. So what I had was an existing trench coat that I thrifted because I don't have a jacket pattern and I couldn't find one that I thought fitted. I found a very cheap gray trench coat and I thought, well, let's, let's see what we can do with this. Basically what I started out was removing all of the pieces that I didn't need. Um, the buttons, the lapels on the shoulders, the, um, the side thingies where you put the belt. <laughs> and the trench coat also have like overlays or I think they're mimicking a rain repeller. I don't think it is rain repeller. The fabric does not seem that way. Uh, but I had one on the chest as well as on the back, so I'm gonna remove that as well. Just so that I could start with as clean slate as possible where I could take in and cut off uh, what I needed to make it fit the model of the chase jacket. I've removed everything that I want to remove. I left the sleeves because I'm going to either I'll cut them off, um, like I said, um, here just at the elbow and then add fabric that I'm removing because I am removing a lot of fabric. I will also be removing like all of this here because the coat is supposed to have this kind of edge. So I can just add that to the arms if I decide to do that instead, which is why I've left them the way they are now in case I just cut them off. Then I'll save myself some time removing that or if I just cut them open and add fabric. Either way, I've left it for now. The lighting is so bad because it's, <laughs> it's getting late. Um, but um, her coat is like folded in and then meets in the middle and then there is um, the ribbons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it in and then attach it to itself and then try it on um, because it is very form-fitted and she has like these lines that goes like this to make it more form-fitted. Um, uh, she has those in the back as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin the side, uh, the front together and then I'll try it on and sort of, I'll try it on inside out and sort of like pin where I need to take it in just to make it more form-fitted. Oh, these are not straight. Oh, Well, this is a good one. So I'm just gonna follow this line uh, and pin all the way and then 
do the same just make them look symmetrical but the basically what was most important to just get the amount that I need to take it in to make it look more form-fitted because her coat is very form-fitted uh, here is a pocket which is a bitch I'm not gonna use it let's just sew it up all the way so I'm just gonna sew that now by machine um, and I think I'm gonna stop for the day because it's it's getting late after I sewed in everything on the jacket the way I wanted it to look and cut off the way I wanted to except for the sleeves I left that for last just because I wanted to make sure I got the embroidery right and I felt like that was a decision I didn't want to make yet so I held off with cutting the sleeves but I did decide to start doing the embroidery for the embroidery on the arm uh, I found the I found the pattern um, just like googling it and what I've done is I've taken it up to the size I don't know if you can see that but uh, it's to the size of my um, from my shoulder uh, to my elbow so um, what I'm gonna do now is old school tracing so I'm just gonna trace it uh, with by putting it like this and then drawing it on this piece of paper and then I'm gonna cut it out and hopefully that will give me the pattern I need. I'm gonna do two of these and then I'm just gonna pin them on the fabric and I'm going to embroider over this so I can just like pull it off when I'm done so I did this and then I'm going to do one that is like mirrored um, which I'm going to just I'm gonna do the same one which I'll just have flip the other way when I put it on um, the sleeve. But yeah, I'm doing that instead. With the sleeves, I used one gray embroidery thread and one silver thread. But with the collar, uh, I used two embroidery threads of the same gray that I used for the sleeves. And I thought one pack, because it's 10 meters, would be enough. It is not enough. Uh, the collar is not finished. And I have to go back and, and buy more of that gray thread. But I filmed it like it was finished even though the collar isn't finished. So at the end of this, if you think that's not a finished collar embroidery, you're, you're, you'd be right. It's not. <laughs> 10 meters is not enough. Uh, but I used two of the threads because I wanted it to be thick enough to actually uh, stand out from the collar. It's pretty much the same color. It's I think it's a little bit... It has like a hint of brown in it compared to the jacket, which is very blue-gray. Does that make sense? Like it's a warmer gray, the embroidery thread, but it's so little you can't even... It's, it's fine. Uh, but I didn't have enough to finish the collar. I wanted the sleeves to be finished. Obviously, they are more special and I didn't want to just use the silver thread because I also wanted that to be more 
standout-ish. I don't know what, uh, what word I'm looking for. I feel like I want to use the word embossed, but that's not what you do. Well, that's what I want. I want it to look, look embossed, but with embroidery thread. 3D. <laughs> I want it to look more 3D, uh, which is why I doubled the thread for both the sleeves and the collar. Like, I'm gonna have to finish it eventually, um, but my hair is in the way, so it's fine. After I finished the embroidery, I started doing the lacing, the front lacing. I didn't film any of that because I was really working like the night before. I had planned with my friend Veronica, who basically films all these videos and takes uh, the photos. She's brilliant. I'm going to link her down below. Um, she's really great at taking pictures and um, she's such a helpful friend. Thank you. Uh, but we had planned to do, like the next day, uh, she came over and we would planned to go out to this um, woods area. I needed to finish it, basically. So I cut um, pieces of the silk ribbon, which is also the same sort of gray. I tried to keep it like similar because I think it's supposed to be, it looks very like the same kind of gray. So that's why I went with. And, oopsie. And uh, I cut pieces of that, um, burn the edges, which is a very good trick to do because otherwise silk ribbons, they just fray. Uh, and I wanted it to be sturdy. Uh, so I burned the edges of that and then I folded it over itself and just sewed it on to... I had um, taken in the front as well as the back, which I did in the beginning, and um, I sewed it on to that, like on the outside of that. One of them has ripped after wearing it, so obviously that wasn't a good thing to do. I have more of that ribbon, so if I'm gonna wear this costume again, which I hope I will, uh, I'm going to redo that by just seam ripping the front where the ribbons are supposed to be and taking larger pieces of the ribbon and doing the same principle but then just sewing it in by machine because I think it will hold better. I sewed it all by hand. Uh, and basically that was it. I then threaded the jacket and had to unthread it because otherwise it doesn't go on uh, and yeah I was finished this project was so fun to make uh, I did make it over like I started in November and then I had a whole December break where I did the winter snow queen dress which I have posted here on my channel so do check that out that is not a good tutorial at all it is marked a terrible tutorial, which this is not because I feel like I have improved and I think that's uh, really nice. I mean, I have no professional training in sewing, disclaimer. Uh, I just love to sew and I do sew my own clothes all the time, either thrift flipping something or like the jacket or using a pattern and sewing something uh, that I want to have that I can't find anywhere. Um, and just making costumes for a character that I love um, is so much fun to do. Um, you'll see in like the finished product footage the aesthetic part. My wig is horrible. It is like the first wig I ever bought and it was 
super cheap. Uh, I might have to fix that up in the future or just get an, a better one. But uh, the outfit is amazing. I bought the brooch, if you're interested in that, on an Etsy shop. I'll link it down below. Uh, it's really beautiful and uh, Arwen wears it several times. Uh, so that will be a cool thing to have. It's just a beautiful like butterfly brooch. Uh, the shoes I thrifted as well. Um, I just needed something cool, boot kind of fantasy-esque and they're really nice. Uh, I like them. But yeah, that was this video. Just a disclaimer, this is a uh, voiceover me when editing this. Uh, I never mentioned where I got the sword, which you'll see in the aesthetic video. Uh, it's also the one that it's currently over my right side head, my left, viewer right, and that's the sword, a replica sword of Arwen's sword in the films. It was made by my father. I asked him to make me a sword. He made it out of wood. I do not know how he made it. It's actually really thin and, well, not sharp, but it's kind of pointy at the end. And then I just painted it after images online that I found of uh, her sword, uh, Hadafang. Do not know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it is a replica of that sword, which, and I did not show it anywhere uh, in this video. I didn't show painting it, and I wasn't around when my father made it, uh, so I do not know how it is made, or what would he made it of, or how one would do that maybe in the future when I ask him to make me another sword out of wood, I'll film it and post it. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, that was just a little thing that I thought I should mention because uh, you'll see the sword in the finished product aesthetic video thingy. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you wanted to learn something, I hope you learned something. Maybe not. There are so many other great uh, content creators here on YouTube. I do feel like maybe I can contribute something, or if not, I do like just sharing um, my sewing journey and the things that I learn and the things that I love to make. Subscribe to my channel uh, if you feel like it and like this video if you liked it. Uh, I hope you did and I'm gonna continue making more videos like this. I also wanna do more historical videos or historical sewing. Um, so that might be cool. Uh, as I said, I have the Anastasia, the, her first outfit. I'm planning to do them chronologically. So I'll start with the, uh, just like the men's shirt and the jacket. Uh, the jacket I won't be making, I have found a thrifted one. Again, I, I just, jackets are a lot of hassle. So, but I did make the shirt and that was really fun. And that's just like a simple, Thing. The video after that will of course be her dream sequence ball gown when she's in the castle. So that might be cool. Never made a ball gown before. That will be exciting. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, here's my handle. Same everywhere. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, you'll see footage of what we filmed, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, on Instagram and I will be posting some TikToks with Arwen <laughs> in, the, in the outfit uh, as well, uh, so do check that out. Um, Veronica, my friend, filmed everything and she also makes my jingle in the beginning. I'll link her down below as well if you want to check her out. She's an actress and she is a wonderful musician and a great friend and a wonderful photographer. So check it out. Uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it entertaining or educational. And I hope to see you soon in the future. Bye.